Hi, Kathy Arbor here. Today I'm going to be drawing some faces and I thought it would be a good chance to show you how I do my realistic face. I've had quite a few people um, asking me to do a more realistic drawings. Um, so what I thought I would do is use this picture here since it's uh, fairly decent photograph of the eyes, nose, and mouth. And um, I'll do a step-by-step -step and show you what I'm looking at and, and how I view it and how I draw it. Um, everybody's different, but um, hopefully some of my techniques will be helpful for you. There's only one thing I must say, and that 75% of what it takes to draw a realistic face is practice. Um, you really need to get some hairdressing books or something with a lot of faces in it, front view. So that's why I like the um, hairdressing books. but. If you, if you haven't got any and you've got magazines at home, use them. So, as you can see, you know, that there's all kinds of them in the book. And try and draw them. If they don't look like the exact same thing as the person in the book, that's okay. Um, very few people that are just starting out get them to look exactly like that. Even I can't do exactly the look of the person. It, that just takes practice. So I know most of you that do faces in your journals and, and um, that type of thing, it's, it's not necessarily to have an exact look of the person. It's more and a, um, a realistic look to the face instead of um, this more stylized look that you see a lot of people doing. <clears throat> and it's usually just very, very simple things that need to be added to the stylized look. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the eyes first, then the nose, then the mouth. Um, the reason why I like doing that is when you're putting it on a page, you can put the eyes in and then outline your face in the proportion that it should be. I just find it easier that way. Instead of making the uh, circle or oval and then try to fit in the eyes to fit the circle. So. I'm going to be using a Stedler um, 2B pencil and I have um, the Mars plastic eraser and I also have a kneadable eraser. Uh, these are great because you can make them into a point and then um, get into really tiny little areas. They rub off great and they don't leave any um, residue. And these are great too. They will not wreck your paper. And the residue is a very small amount. And this also works on top of um, any of your matte mediums or gesso. So it won't take the grit or disturb the paper fibers. So it's a little something to keep in mind. And I do believe in erasing. <laughs> okay, so let's get started here. Uh, let's see. I'm going to start with this eye. Maybe I'll um, go in, I'll zoom in a little bit. And then you'll be able to see things a little better. Let's see how this is going to work. All right. Now, when doing the eye, 
um, the best way of doing an, drawing anything is only look at the area you're going to be drawing. Don't look at the whole eye. Does your brain tends to take in what it thinks an eye looks like and you end up drawing it the way you would in your childhood, which is like a stylistic eye. But if you want the exact dimensions and exact lines of the eye you're looking at, the trick is to follow here and only draw that. Don't bother looking at all, all of this because it, it, it gets harder. So what I do is I usually start in the beginning of the eye right here. And you can also use your pencil for um, measuring. So I'm going to make it the same width. So we got it right here and about here. And if you notice, the eye corner here is lower than the corner here. So keep that in mind too. Okay, so we've got a slight curve. And remember it's up higher. And then you notice here it dips down quite quickly and that goes up. And I may not make it the first time, but that's what the erasers are for. Okay. Now I can always erase as I go. So now you can look at this whole shape here. Does it look the same? It's a little more rounded here. So I have to change this. See how slight it is? But it makes a difference. Okay. Now the eyeball, if you notice it there's just a, it's just kind of slip, sitting on the bottom lid so it's right about here oh I should point out uh, a minute so it's round Now some people use those um, stencils, they're kind of like a stencil of different circles. You could use those because your eye is round. There is no oval, it's not wonky, it's round. Um, her pupil is right about there. Maybe a little smaller. So when you're doing, if you're trying to get it to look exactly like the person that you're drawing, then these tiny little, like you wouldn't think they would mean much, but they do. The slightest amount that you're off on an eye can change the look of the person. Okay, now the, what I'm doing here is it's going to be a painting, so we don't have to put all the shadowing in. Now if you notice, this comes up here. See how it comes up? And then it kind of goes straight, and then it goes down. Now this is a little exaggerated. And it stops. There's the corner of her eye, and so it stops just past her eye.
Actually, it could be up a little more. Okay. Um, that could be up a little bit. It's a little bit too long. This is a little bit long. Okay. Now I can see that this should come down more. So it all depends on, you know, how accurate you want to get. Okay. Now the tear duct is right about here. A lot of stylistic eyes do not have the tear duct in it. Same with this here. Sometimes they're too wide. There's too much white showing. Okay. Now you can see right here See this here? This is the shelf. And for your eye to look more realistic, it's important to put this in. So this is just a very small shelf. It makes all the difference. So there's where the highlight is. Okay. There's just kind of um I think I need to make that a little bit. That's better. Okay. Maybe that could be a little longer. And it does go up quite a bit, so I'm going to do that. Now our eyelashes are fairly thick, so it's kind of hard to see the very edge, but I'm assuming that's where it is. Okay, so for painting ability, that's all you need. So the eyebrows from the corner of her eye up here, right here to here, there's a little, there's about there. And make sure when you're doing the eyebrows, the hairs are going in the proper direction. Now, almost the pupil is where it starts thinning. There's a few going this way. Okay. And it stops past her eye. There's always a few like that. All right. Now, for 
her her other eye. Um, I'm going to do this. Let's see. Um, you won't be able to see the picture, but usually this amount of your eye is usually equal between your eyes. So let's see what she has. She has this amount, and yeah, very, very close. And that's usually the way it is in most people. Um, so what I'm going to do, actually, I'm just thinking about it. I'm The painting I'm going to do is kind of have part of her face in, not all of it. So this eye, I think I'm just going to leave. So I'm going to do the nose. So let's see. It's that long. So the tip of her nose is about here. So that's where her nose starts. The width is the same width of her eye. So it will line up with the corners of her eye, which will be. Right there. All right. So what I like to do, because we're going to be painting it, um, her nostrils, she has very um, I don't know how you would say it. So most of this area here will be dark. And then The sides of her nose are like that. All right. Okay. Now she has a very 
She has a very um, shallow upper lip and very full lips. So it'll be about here. And you can see that they they're a very nice shape, heart shape. And they, let's see, they stop. They stop where her eyes, the iris starts on both corners. So, would be. Right about here. Lips, I find the hardest thing to do. I don't know why. <laughs> I've always struggled with lips. Um, Now, let's see, she has fairly, um, you see I'm not making a straight line, because your lips have wrinkles. And she has a very full bottom lip. Quite full actually. And it's round. So that's, you don't need to go to here because you can see that it just kind of fades off in here. And it's very shaded just in the corner here. So you can just emphasize that. That will give you a better um, idea for your shading purposes when you're painting. She has a very, um, you could tell because of the shadow right here. 
And then there's this highlight. So her lip is protruding out quite a bit. So we'll just do that. She doesn't really have a definite um, line in her top lip like most people do. All right. Then her chin. Is about the width or the length of her lip. She has a um, kind of a squarish Okay, there's what I've done so far. And it's not too bad. Pretty good for the uh, start of a drawing. You can always um, change it up. Um, so, this will be the start of painting that I'm going to do and this just gives me where I need to paint and an idea of where highlights should go um, and shadowing. So it's really not as you can see it, it wasn't real difficult. Um, now I was drawing this for a sketch. Yes, I would put a lot more detail in it. Um, but as far as drawing for painting, this is how I do mine. It's very, very simple drawing. Um, most of the realism comes with the painting and the shadowing and the highlights. So to have the nose done properly, it'll be all this shadow shadowing along the sides here. Nobody has, I know with uh, a lot of stylized, here I'll do it on the back of this. So here's your your nose. A lot of people do this stylized nose where they emphasize the nostrils and then they have this line that comes up. Nobody has a straight line that comes up to the eyebrow. Um, that's stylized. Um, so to, to get your realistic nose, it's all about shading. Um, and I'll show you how to do that. And same with the mouth and the eyes. And another important thing is the highlights, where the highlights are. So stay tuned for part two, and um, I'll see you then.